Today, I'm going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble a World War II Japanese Type 11. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is make sure that the gun is unloaded. Next, we want to go ahead and remove the unique hopper. And there's a little button and tab here that moves back. And pull back on that and pull out to the left and it, it'll remove the hopper from the receiver. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take the internals out. Now to do that, there's a lever here. It swings down and comes out and uh, depending on the strength of your recoil spring, we're going to hold on to the, to the back plate remove the pin and your back plate comes off and here's your recoil spring it's held captive here next we have the charging handle you're going to pull back on the charging handle and then grab your internals here so here you can see the the op rod and the bolt the bolt lock typical Hotchkiss design sits on top here. So we'll remove these two pieces. Now with that, your charging handle, it uh, can just uh, pop out off to the side, lay it down. If you want to remove your oiler, there's a little tab here. You can push down on the tab and pull this out. And it's held by a little, just a little, little nubbin here that corresponds. And this is where, when the cartridges roll through, they would depress this and the oil would then come out to lube your rounds to aid in the extraction. Now that everything's out of the receiver, we can remove the actual uh, trigger, lower, and buttstock. And as you can see, there's basically a little pin here that you can tap, tap out, tap out, out, out the other side. Okay. Now to remove the buttstock, it's uh, held on uh, two rails on either side, and you've got to remember to depress your trigger because your sear catch literally comes up through the receiver. So I pull the trigger. And release the trigger you see the sear come back through the receiver so to remove this we've got to pull the trigger to get the sear out of the way and now we're past you can see the sear trigger hole here and that removes the lower butt stock and trigger mechanism and here's your sear. Your safety is here and to remove this you literally have to twist up and, and pull out but no need to go that far. Now to remove your receiver from your barrel jacket, barrel and gas tube, there's a little pin right here. This is a pin you don't want to lose and basically you can tap this out locks the, the two halves together this now allows you then to simply thread the receiver off of your front jacket As you can see two pieces and if you want to go further, this is your ejector lever, and it's just simply held on by a pin. So you could tap, tap this out, pull this out, and this comes off. So, but I'm not going to go that far with this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now these barrels, you can see the barrel in here, and the barrels are press fit in. So depending on how often the gun's been apart, how dirty it is, or how tight this barrel is pressed in, you may need a rubber mallet. Um, this one's typically, it's, it's been pretty loose. You tap it out, 
there's a notch here with a corresponding notch inside that, that lines up to make sure that it only goes in one way. And here's your barrel. And this small hole here is your is your your gas hole. No jokes on that. And your gas adjustment is right here in the front. It's got a spring-loaded knob that hold, locks it in place. You can lift up and twi uh, twist, and it holds it in the open position. There you go. And this will allow you then to unthread your actual gas regulator. And you can see here, there's several different size holes. And that corresponds with numbers that run along here, 10, 15, 18, 20, 28. So this allows you to adjust your gas depending on conditions, how dirty the gun is, and the ammunition that you're running. So all that's left is the front bipod. I have a couple of uh, pins that allow further extension of the, of the front bipod. They snap back down when not in place and otherwise fold up. And that is the front half of your gun. So that's it. The gun is actually completely disassembled down to basically the, the bare receiver, you know, minus the ejector here. Um, you've got two blocks on either side. Here and here. And these are what uh, allow you to basically how you adjust uh, your headspace on the gun for your for your bolt when it's completely in the forward um, uh, in battery position. Now we'll go over the uh, the bolt here. It's rather unique. It's your locking block here, and as it rides forward and this blocks up, the firing pin uh, cannot be engaged. Once fully in the battery, locking block drops down. You see your firing pin here. That can then be pushed forward when it's fully in battery and the firing pin sticks out. And this is your extractor and this is actually your extractor spring. And to get your extractor off, you've got to lift up on your extractor spring, turn 45 degrees, and you can see this lines up here, and that allows you to remove your extractor spring, and your extractor comes out here. So if you ever have to replace a broken extractor, that's how you do it. To reassemble, place back in here lift up and snap into place and that's spring loaded. These do break so it's uh, good to have reproduction or originals on hand. And just to reiterate, firing pin out, locking block to the rear, it rides over this. So that is it. Next step, we're going to go ahead and completely reassemble so that uh, that's clear and simple. So now we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. And um, I think we'll first start with uh, getting the, the uh, barrel back into the front jacket. So slide in. Once again, your notch will align with the notch inside the, the front uh, Barrel jacket. There we go. Feel when it hits the sweet spot. As you give it a nice tug, make sure it's all the way forward. And you can put your two receiver halves together now. Now these do need to be tight.
timed. If you have a mismatched gun, a lot of times when you thread this all the way in, it, it won't align properly right when it's supposed to. Uh, luckily this gun here threads all the way in, it stops. Some might come to here and stop and you gotta maybe take a little material off up in the front. But get this basically locked back together again. And now we want to uh, put our little pin back in. So now that's lined up. Make sure that's in all the way. We can take our gas regulator. Go ahead and thread this back into your gas tube in the front. And so depending, you can take it all the way in. There's an indicator mark here. So this is uh, level 10, the lowest setting. And I think I've ran this one at 18. And you can release this knob, locks it back into place. So next we can probably go ahead and get the uh, butt stock put back on. Same thing, make sure we depress our sear. Line it up. Make sure it's all the way forward. And your sear can go through the receiver receiver hole. And we're gonna take this pin here. Put it in on the other side, it's, it's going to you know, basically come back out here. So that's it. We're back together there. And we can put our oiler back on. Just line this up and we're going to push down on this little lever. So that's on. And before we put our internals back in, you always want to remember go ahead and get your charging handle. Get it back in place. bolt, firing pin, locking pin, locking bolt. Alright, so when you put this in, here's the only tricky part. I think that it can get some people. If you notice, the other handy deal, hand, or the other handy part of having the offset buttstock allows the access to remove your internals. But you're going to slide this in. Line up your piston. And as this goes forward, everything everything has grooves that it fits in. It's pretty obvious. But this this last section, you have to lift your locking piece up till it matches. So that's that's the tricky part. You got to lift that up till it slides into it its appropriate uh, cutouts. And you pull the trigger. And this should go all the way forward. Get your back plate and spring. The spring goes in the back of the of your uh, op rod. As you push forward, hold on to that with your thumb. Grab your back plate piece. There's a little notch here that corresponds with the notch in the back plate. Put that forward, and they're going to spring load it. It'll latch in, locks it in, and um, really the last piece is back to the hopper. And it also has basically a, a groove that it fits in.
lock that back in place. Check function. And there you go. So this completes the disassembly, reassembly of the Type 11. Uh, hopefully this will be beneficial to anyone that uh, happens to get one of these. And uh, enjoy.